What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory School Memory and I'm back here in the classroom trying to get it cleaned up. Uh, we had a pretty huge crowd last night. We were teaching a dive table specialty course. Uh, it's a recognition course that we developed for SSI. And in short, it's a good way for you to refresh how to use the dive tables, how to do advanced techniques with it, such as say minimum surface intervals, reverse profiles, integrating profiles between air and nitrox, uh, and how to integrate dive planning using both the tables and your dive computer. And we had a really good turnout. We had anywhere from students in their pre-teens, we had a nine-year-old here, all the way up into their 50s, and it was a really good turnout. Everybody felt refreshed after the class. They enjoyed the class and it's something that we're going to continue to do. Now, since I'm on the subject of tables, this is kind of a tabooish subject right now in the scuba industry because most of the major training agencies are getting rid of the tables. They're not quite as prevalent at the open water level as what they used to be say from the 50s to the early 2000s and and it's primarily because dive computers dive computers make diving so much safer so much more enjoyable and so much more fun now remember this is at the recreational level we're not talking about the professional level the technical level or even say the commercial level we're simply talking about the recreational level now there was a video recently produced by alec pierce scuba it's a really great video i actually link it down below where he talks about how diving the training of diving has gotten better Better over the years and a couple years ago we actually produced a video where I asked has diver training really been watered down just because divers are not trained the same military style of training that we did say in the early 80s or even in the 70s or 60s as what it is today you know personally I don't believe that diver training has been watered down I believe that certain things have been taken out of that open water course simply because they're not as prevalent at that level as what they are later on in advanced level courses. And by the way, that's what the advanced courses and the specialty courses are about. That's so that you can advance your career and get more knowledge and get better educated as a diver. But at the open water level, there's a lot of things that can be taken out and it should be taken out simply because they're not necessarily that important at that level. And that's what Alec Pierce's uh, video did. He really kind of hit that nail on the head and talked about that. There's certain things that are simply not as important anymore because we have better and safer technology to allow us to have more fun, be more proficient underwater, and more importantly, be safer underwater. Now, I know I'm going to have a lot of tech haters out there or techies that hate me for saying this but guys we're not training people to be tech divers we're not training people to be public safety divers we're not training people to be dive professionals we are training people at the open water level to simply be that open water divers and that is the heart and soul of this scuba industry i want to show you something really quick on this spectrum here this is considered the scuba spectrum uh, you can get these numbers just from about any training agency but the scuba spectrum is made up 100% of recreational divers. Every single certified diver out there is a recreational divers. Even the tech divers, even the commercial divers were recreational divers. We got all the same recreational training under. Don't hold our breath. Don't come up too fast. Always dive with a buddy. Always check your gear before you get in and make sure you have an adequate amount of air supply. That is all of us. That is 100% of us. About 30% are dive professionals. Those are your dive masters and up. Your dive masters, your assistant instructors, your instructors. About 20% are your technical guys. That's a small percentage. That's only one-fifth of divers. And one out of every five divers becomes a technical diver. And then we've got the crowd down here, which I happen to also be a part of, the public safety divers. That's less than really 10% of all divers. One out of every 10 divers usually goes on to be a public safety diver. And that, that number is, is a little bit elevated simply because it's even less than that. But in general, this is the scuba spectrum. You have to understand that at the open water level, we cannot train them to be public safety divers, we cannot train them to be technical divers, and we cannot train them to be dive professionals. We're simply training them to be open water divers. Now, we can't force someone to go above and beyond what their personal goals are. All that we can do is kind kind of teach them what we do and see if we can instill a drive or a passion in them to make them want to continue their training. So with this being said, and with the current technological advancements in dive computers, there's a lot of things that are going to continue to come out of the open water course. The dive tables have already been taken out by most of the major training agencies. Even SSI has taken them out of the open water program as a 
uh, necessity, they have put them in the appendix section. And whether you like it or not, whether you feel that's good or bad, this is just the way it's going. It's not something that we can change, guys, no matter how far we fuss about it. It's not going to change for us, so we're going to have to adapt to it. You know, dive computers do make us much safer. They do make diving much more enjoyable. And to be honest with you, nobody's like really likes carrying these big tables around. Now, all that being said, I will go ahead and tell you, I am an old school diver. I am an old school instructor. I do enjoy the tables, hence why we had the tables class last night. And I do feel that it is important for divers to understand that. But once again, there is a difference between the open water student who just becomes certified or the open water diver and an actual avid diver who goes out and diving. I would really like to know what the overall percentage of people who get certified and continue on, say, the advanced course, then the rescue course, and all the way on up through the dive master course to the instructor. I would really like to see uh, a concrete number, and it's going to be difficult between all the agencies to actually see that number, but I would really like to know what the overall percentage of people who become certified and then continue their diving career. Because with that being said, they don't need dive tables to dive to 30 foot on a shallow reef for 30 minutes. They just simply don't need it. However, if they do continue on, it's something that they are going to have to need to understand. Um, and, you know, the old saying, well, if your computer dies, you can pull out a table and this, that, and the other, and you can continue to plan your dive. That's true, but if your computer dies, it's your fault. Today's computers have battery indicators. If the battery dies underwater, that is simply your fault. If your computer floods with water, once again, that is your fault. There's a lot of computers that are user-friendly. That simply means that you can unscrew the cap on the back, Put a new battery in, put a new O-ring in, and screw the cap back down. They're user-friendly computers. But if you don't do it the way the manufacturer tells you to do, or you don't replace the O-ring because maybe you want to buy the battery, say, at Walgreens or Walmart versus from a dive shop, and you didn't get the right size O-ring, or you didn't replace the O-ring and it leaks, that is your fault. That is not a catastrophic failure. That is not a gear manufacturer failure. That is your fault because you wasn't safe. Maybe you wanted to save a little bit of money here or there, but that is your fault. At that point, when you get out of the water, your diving's done. You don't need to switch gauges because you really need to consider, are you being safe by doing what you did? All that being said, guys, I hope you understand this is not a rant. This is simply fact. This is where the scuba industry is going, whether you like it or not. The tables, in my opinion, are still relevant, and they still should be taught, but should they be taught at the open water level? That's debatable simply because the computers that we're using today are safer. They make diving more enjoyable and more efficient. And, you know, people just simply don't have time to sit through a 40-hour class to learn how to blow bubbles. We are competing in the scuba industry. You know, dive shops are not competing with each other. Gear manufacturers are not competing with each other. We are competing with outside uh, other industries, if you will, from the scuba industry because people just don't have the time to sit around in a classroom and listen to an instructor jab and jab and jab on. So we've got to make learning to dive much easier while still keeping it safe. And that's where techn technological advancements in dive computers come in. The tables, very important for advanced divers. Not so much important for open water divers now. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I really want to know your personal opinion on this. Drop me a comment. Let me know. Am I crazy? Is it something I don't know what I'm talking about? Uh, just let me know your opinions in the matter, whether you like the dive tables, whether you think they ought to go by the wayside, especially at the open water level or if it's something that you want to see for many, many years to come. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it didn't sound like a rant. It wasn't meant to be a rant. I do want to give a quick shout out to some of our um, favorite YouTubers out there. Simply Scuba did this for us here a couple of months ago, and we want to kind of return the favor to them guys, but I also want to talk about some other great educational channels that we like here on YouTube, because that's what our channel is all about. Our channel is about you guys learning from us, and if there's something that we can't teach you but someone else can, then we want to get that information out there to you. So I want to give a quick shout out to several YouTube channels that we really like, and these are all scuba diving channels. Uh, first of all, Adam Freediver. If you guys are free divers go check out his channel uh, we just become recent subscribers of, of his here in the past couple of months 
and we really like his channel. He talks all about um, free diving, breath holding techniques, uh, proper finning techniques. Uh, he goes over gear selection for free diving. It's an absolute all around great channel. Uh, he seems to be a pretty cool family guy. I know him and his wife just had a kid. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Shouts out to him for that. But yeah, go check out Adam Freediver. Also, uh, check out the Marias and SSI Facebook. Yeah, we're Marias and SSI fans. You, you guys know that. But the cool thing about their YouTube channels is you're going to see all the new gear that's coming out on the market that we get to see every year at DEMA. So you guys are going to get to see it at the same time that we kind of get to see it as well. So that's pretty cool there. SSI, I'm telling you, they are the four leaders in online training right now. They they kick everyone else's butt when it comes to uh, their online digital material, the way it updates, how it's integrated to your log books, how your computer downloads automatically through Bluetooth. I mean, it, just by far, they are the industry leader right now on the online digital system so check it out as well um i also want to give a shout out to uh, alec pierce scuba probably one of the best all-around scuba diving youtube channels out there uh he he's been there guys you know i've been in this industry for this is my 31th year in the industry uh he's been in it well over 50 years he has probably forgot more about scuba than i will ever know so definitely go check out alec pierce scuba if you're not a subscriber of his and then last but not least Simply Scuba. Those guys gave us a, a huge shout out. We want to return the favor for them. And I'll be honest with you, we have been Simply Scuba fans since the beginning. We've been subscribers of theirs, primarily because we are a Mares dealer. And with them being across the big pond from us, they get a lot of the new Mares equipment before we actually get it here in the States. And we can utilize their resources, watch their videos, learn about the equipment before we actually get it here. And that way, whenever we do our own product and gear reviews on it, we have a little bit better understanding of the equipment uh, than what we normally would if if we were just waiting on it to, to ship over here to the state. So definitely go check out Simply Scuba as well. But guys, guys, that's our educational list of what you should be subscribed to here on YouTube. Like I said, I really hope you enjoy our videos. We want to produce educational videos for you. We try our best not to stage anything on here. A lot of our search and recovery videos, they are not staged. Guys, you are seeing firsthand what we see because, you know, we mount the camera on our face. We want you guys to see exactly what we see and what we go through. Our gear reviews, you know, if you've watched our videos long enough, you'll know there's certain types of gear out there that I don't like. I'm going to be honest with you when I give our gear reviews. If I tell you there's something I don't like, I simply don't like it. If it's something I can't recommend to you guys, then I'll say that as well. So it's not like somebody sends me something I'm automatically going to give it a good review. Uh, guys, I promise you I'll always be honest on that. Our training videos, our physics videos, you know, if you've got a question on something, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it. If I personally can't answer it, guys, I promise you I've got the resources. I can get an answer for you. So don't be afraid to ask me a question in the comment section below. But guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. Once again, please don't think it's a rant. It's not a rant. I just want to talk about the realities of scuba and where it's going, where diver training is going in the future. And we're going to have to adapt to it or we're going to get left behind. But guys, that's it it for today. If you like this video, simply smash that like button for me. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.